It is party time, Mom. Welcome to... Do you know my mother has still not talked to me since the new year? <laughs> like, I call her on the phone. I called her the other night. She's like, hey... And she mentions my cousin by name. I'm having, I'm having dinner at his house, and I'm about to watch the football game. Catch up with you later. <laughs> Maybe my appendix fell out or something, Mom. I mean, dude, I mean I'm half 100 years old, you would think. <laughs> Did you do something to her? No. She's just busy. My, mom. my mom's got stuff going on. I like her. She's got stuff going on, you know. The Puppet Master Mark driving the mothership, which is Studio 22. And, of course, Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, making sure that I stay on track. Um, appreciate you guys. We're going to get into this whole debate thing. Uh, if you missed the snooze fest last night, which was... The Democratic debate. What is that like? The 18th one they've had, Candace, mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, they've just they just keep talking about the same old thing. Interesting to me. Well, we'll get into what's interesting to me here in a little bit. But I want to talk about this. And I think after these debates, what we need to start doing is just doing a little summary episode, so nobody has to watch this garbage and be bored. Because I was on Instagram last night. I didn't. I did. I watched the highlights back. I didn't watch the actual debate, Natalie. I just would go back into the thing and be like, yeah, well, nobody blames you. And it, but everybody on Instagram was like, oh, my God, this is so boring. And there were people like Stu Gear who had taken over the Blaze TV's Instagram, and he was kind of doing a live uh, Instagram deal on the stories of the, of the debate, and he was bored out of his mind. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez, News & White Matters, our, our friend Sarah, she was sitting over mm -hmm. there. She was bored out of her mind, uh, you know, had her makeup off and stuff. And I was like, who's that fella? <laughs> <laughs> she is going to hunt you down. She will. So last night, they got into this thing, uh, this debate stuff, and it's just absolutely crazy. And I want to break it down for you, give you a couple of takeaways. Before we do that, I want to remind everybody to uh, go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. You know, you've heard us talk about it. Black Rifle Coffee, our good buddies over there. As uh, Clint Emerson comes in here, he says, if you're going to drink that Army coffee, you got to drink it out of a Marine or a Navy cup. And he brought me one of his knockout mugs. And I'm happy to do that. Look, veteran-owned, operated, premium small batch, roast-to-order coffee company for people who love America. They're going to import only the highest quality beans from around the world and always roast-to-order their coffees for you after you place your order to ensure you receive the freshest coffee available. Develop their explosive roast with profiles, the same mission focus they learned as military members serving this great country. All Black Rifle Coffee Company blends are available in a whole bean, which is what I get, the ground varieties, and they also have the, a lot of their roasts available for purchase in the single-serve coffee rounds for your machine. The best way to enjoy this freedom-filled coffee is the Black Rifle Coffee Club. I'm a member. Steve's a member. Natalie should be a member. I don't know what you do anymore. We're trying to get Black Rifle Coffee to come be a distributor in Texas Gun Experience. They're open to it. Y'all are open to it. Let me tie that knot. You guys choose the amount and the blends that you crave. They're going to offer it to you at a special discounted price. It's going to be shipped directly to your house, office, wherever you, whatever tent you live in under whatever bridge. They'll get it to you. You can get it every month. You can get it every 60 days, 90 days, whatever. And the convenience of that allows you to keep on working hard, making America the land of the free, the home of the brave, and keeping it great. You know what I'm talking about? You'll never have to rush to the store again. Wake up to America's Coffee by going to blackriflecoffee.com slash watch Chad. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash WatchChad. Enter the promo code and discount code, by the way, WatchChad. Get 20% off your first order. And by the way, that also applies to the coffee club. So go do it right now. All right. Play this clip. Our favorite Indian, Elizabeth Warren, who has a 1 in 10 24th chance of winning <laughs> the election as president. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, she thinks she's got a great chance against uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Uh, Candace, play that clip. I disagreed. Bernie is my friend, and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. Bullshit. But look, this question about whether or not a woman can be president has been raised, and it's time for us to attack it head on. Um, and I think the best way to talk about who can win is by looking at people's winning record. So, can a woman beat Donald Trump? Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. The only people Man. on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and me. Burn. <laughs> well done. And the only person on this stage who has beaten an incumbent Republican any time in the past 30 years is me. And here's what I know. 
The real danger that we face as Democrats is picking a candidate who can't pull our party together or someone who takes for granted big parts of the Democratic constituency. We need a candidate who will excite all parts of the Democratic Party, bring everyone in, and give everyone a Democrat to believe in. That's my plan, and that is why I'm going to win. Senator Klobuchar. She's tough, man. Purple's a good color on her. That's my plan. That's my plan. That's my plan. I'm going to grab me a beer. And uh, remember, she was doing the little live feed video. <laughs> yes. I was like, come on. Don't even try to be a real person. We know better. <laughs> um, she always looks like she's a little bit shaky, like she's about ready to cry. You know, I always have to do the physical breakdowns of people. People mm -hmm. get mad at me. She always looks like she's a little bit nervous. I don't recognize her unless the hand's in the air and she's running. You know, it's really more like a controlled fall. Why is she always running everywhere? She's wired for speed. For she's sure. something. Or with speech. She's something. But does that win your vote over? I mean, because I've won every election, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't understand how people like that are still in the entire race. You lied to get a scholarship to get into college. You made $440,000 a year to teach, what, one class at Harvard. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how people like that are even taken seriously in, in this world we live in. I, I will say most of the people that I talked to about the debate, you said many said it was boring. I heard it was irrelevant. Yeah. I will say from a debate stamp stance, that minute 30 that she gave was pretty good. From solid. a debate, it was solid. solid. Like she's a good debater. But I will say, like I said about Barack Obama, you hear it, and it's like, that sounds good, but what right. does it mean? What are you saying? Okay, so you've won the elections you've run in, and some of the guys on there haven't, but you haven't run for president. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different deal. The issue is, can a woman, because the debate there... And the issue was, you know, she and Bernie kind of butted heads over the whole thing. And I'm just impressed that Bernie knows how to tweet with his jitterbug phone. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said that a woman can't win the presidency, in essence. And that's what she took issue with. And there was some there was some there was some headbutting at the end. If you watch mm -hmm. the end of the debate, she walks over there to shake his hand. Or, or he walks over to shake her hand. He just inadvertent, and she just tucks yeah. up, and he's like, okay, we're going to play this game. And he pulled it back real quick. And he was like, all right. And you could tell they're going at it. Well, I tweeted the video clip, or, or at least the image of that, and I said, well, you know, that's the thing about socialists and Marxists. That eventually, the ones that want to be in power are going to kill each other because it's a self, you know, it's it, they just, they can't, their they're, they're quest for power. See, in socialism and in Marxism, you're either in power or you have no power. Mm -hmm. And so if you have no power, that's anathema. That's a curse. You can't allow yourself to get to that place, right? All you got to do is ask Leon Trotsky, who tried to flee to Mexico and got an ice axe to the back of the head for his efforts, the long arm of the KGB. Mm. And Stalin actually gave his uh, assassin a, whatever their Medal of Honor thing is, you know, later on. You just... Don't Marxists don't get along in the long run, the ones in power, because there's going to be one that's not in power. Right. And guess what happens? They put you in ships. They seal up the doors. <laughs> they send you out into the Volcker River and they sink it. <laughs> that's right. the way that's the way Marxists While do. While they're starving. Yeah. So you want to talk about this. It ain't about this is not about men, women, white, black. This is not mm -mm. about the identity politics. This is about the power of politics when it comes to these people. So when I say I don't know what they're saying, I want you to see everything they're saying through that lens. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how you see it. What's your takeaway, Steve? Well, you're talking about Elizabeth Warren, um, her shaking. You know when she's, she's always shaking like that? I, I, it reminds me of when I was a kid and I was in Sunday school acting up. And my, she reminds me of a Sunday school teacher that really can't do anything to you, but she's, I'm angry. I'm yeah. angry. She's just so and wired just up. Just wired up. She's on so, bang energy. She but they're huge nothing. conservatives, bang. <laughs> you know. Mike, does that impress you as a uh, commander-in-chief there? Yeah, I mean, I'm blown away by her, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all of the worst ways she reminds me of a uh, like a an elementary school librarian yeah you know that uh i don't know how like you can't help but just kind of feel half feel bad for her and half just be annoyed you know yeah. but uh, right. to your point i mean she's lied about so many things to me and anybody that would seriously you know consider her and, and even consider voting for her i think uh you know ought to have their head caved in frankly because i mean I, I don't know how you look at that and say well that's all right you know i mean means to an end i don't, I don't know what justifies 
all of the things she's lied about. I mean, that, that pregnancy story, getting fired for being pregnant, has been debunked. And she's told that story probably 500 times in the yeah. last two years, you know. And so, I, again, I don't know how anybody with a conscience could look at uh, at her, her record from a, a debate and stump speech standpoint and, and think, yeah, that I think that's the best foot forward for this country. I, yeah, I, just, I, I agree with you 100%. Bernie <laughs> fires back. I'm just happy to see there's less people. You don't have three thirty people on the debate stage anymore. Mm-hmm. Bernie fires back. Candace, let's take a quick look at this clip. Let's now turn to an issue that's come up in the last 48 hours. Senator Sanders, CNN reported yesterday that, and Senator Sanders, Senator Warren confirmed in a statement that in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. Uh, And I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump and maybe some of the media want. Uh, Anybody knows me knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Go to YouTube today. There's a video of of me 30 years ago talking about how a woman could become president of the United States. In 2015, I deferred, in fact, to Senator Warren. There was a movement to draft Senator Warren to run for president. And you know what? I said, stayed back. Senator Warren decided not to run, and I did did run afterwards. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million votes. How could anybody in a million years not believe that a woman could become president of the United States? And let me be very clear. If any of the women on this stage or any of the men on this stage win the nomination, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's me. (laughs) But if they do, I will do everything in my power to make sure that they are elected in order to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country. So, Senator Sanders, Senator Sanders, I do want to be clear here. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. All right. So, this bitch, she could win it. I'm just glad he's got his hair laying down. (laughs) You know, he's not all, looks like he's in the wind. Remember, now, Bernie Sanders is a guy who got kicked off the communist compound for being too lazy. I don't, you want to you want to read into some history there? You go check that out. This is a guy who did his honeymoon in Russia, um, and and again, look, I've been to Russia, but it's different. I I didn't go there to embrace the culture, right? I want to go in there to change the culture that I could. Bernie goes in there to embrace this communist culture. I mean, the guy is a communist. He is a Marxist. Whatever you want to, whatever label you want to say, ultimately the end game is the same. But I want to take you back to 1988. You got that clip. And let's see exactly what the Bernster said. (laughs) The real issue is not whether you're black or white, whether you're a woman or a man. In my view, a woman could be elected president of the United States. The real issue is whose side are you on? Are you on the side of workers and poor people, or are you on the side of big money and the corporations? There you go. There you go. All right, I'll let you guys decide on that. Again, I don't care. Do you, Mike, you've been around the world. My God, you've seen it all. You've seen the worst of the worst of humanity. And you've certainly seen geopolitical politics and warfare. Is the world ready for a woman president of the leader to be the leader of the free world? It's one thing to be Merkel in Germany. Yeah, that's not America. I, I guess you know, to me, especially as it relates to the specificity of of the left, right? This party, if if being a woman, according to them, is just a state of mind, then what difference does it make? I- Good point. Right. I mean, because what I would like to see is that, you know, if Donald Trump, as an example, came out as as a transgender female, how could you argue with that? Because then he would be the first female president and they couldn't debate it because then they would be arguing with themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my my broader point, I guess, is that given the fact that they spend so much time talking about transgender being a state of mind and, and et cetera. I, I don't know why they, they continue to, to focus so hard on this because it, to me it's contradictory to that whole viewpoint of, yeah. of it's not science, it's, it's how you feel about yourself. It's a mindset. Yeah, so if, if, being, if being a woman's a state of mind, then why are you talking about it? You know, exactly. who, who gives a shit? That, and, that, and that's exactly, God, that's a valuable point. I mean, it's just so true because the, why the hypocrisy? Yeah, I mean, on a whole thing. Why do you care if, if it doesn't matter, right? I mean, you got, and, and even on a, on a more base level, because that's where I tend to live, you have people complaining about Donald Trump and his hot mic 
episode where he says, well, you know, if you're a celebrity, they just let, you know, you just kiss them. They just let you grab them by the, mm-hmm. well, that's true. I mean, they do. They do. And especially if you're a billionaire, they he's especially right. do. Uh, he's exactly right about that. 100%. But then you're going to go out and, and glorify this idea that Gwyneth Paltrow can come out with a candle that smells like her supposedly vagina. Um, wh- where's the standard there? Well, it's her vagina. She can do with it what she wants. Well, you know, if if Natalie wants a billionaire to grab hers, then guess what? That's hers too. And Trump's just saying, well, she let me. <laughs> yeah, How do we know it smells like her vagina if we're not able to test it? Yeah. You How know? do you know? Yeah, because you have to have a comparison. Yeah. You do. You really do. You have to have the candle and her vagina. Because, you know, if I had a vagina and I was making a candle, I'd want it to smell really good. Mm-hmm. How do you smell your own vagina? Well, yeah. well there's ways. <laughs> if you can smell your own vagina... <laughs> I, I like how the, the three guys are talking about that. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, Natalie will chime in. Trust me. <laughs> I, I was actually just going to say from Tips, a, tricks, what? from a women. Well, I'll, more on, uh, that later. From a woman's perspective, the second that I hear somebody on that stage say, first woman president, you've kind of lost me because I feel like your priorities are off. I don't care. Exactly. I want somebody to get the job done. Now, my grandmother she will roll over in her grave if she ever hears of a woman becoming president. She wouldn't even go to a woman doctor. She wouldn't go to a woman dentist. She just wanted men. She that would that yeah. was that mindset. I know that we've come a long way since then. Me, I'm just I just want you to get the job done. I don't care. And the second that I hear them talking about first woman, first woman, first black, for you know, Ronnell Smith, uh, Ronnell talked about this with us. He said, "I don't care about that. I don't care about." Very few people do care about right, that. Right, but it's, in the grand it, scheme, it, it's brought up every single time because to me. Hillary Clinton, war, any, they they just want to be the first. Yeah. Well, you've lost me because I don't care if you're a woman. I, I, what I care is that you get the job done. You're not going to be able to get the job done. Your priorities are wrong. So you're exactly right on that because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I don't care what equipment you're working with. Right. It, it's up here. Like mm-hmm. I, I have to look at somebody like Nikki Haley and I'm thinking, well, what I know of her, she's at least shown some some, you know, genital fortitude there. She's got balls. At least how she treated the UN, uh, the UN, the UN, mm-hmm. and the way she handled those kind of things. I like that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. My issue, and I've said it over and over again, is I don't think the world is ready for a gay president when you bring in somebody like Pete Buttigieg because they're still stoning them in Brunei and they're throwing them off of buildings mm-hmm. in Yemen. So the idea of being able to go in there and be a strong leader who's going, because again, it doesn't matter how woke America is. Right. The rest of the world ain't woke. Right. Am I right, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, I can tell you, I've been to places where, you know, if you didn't have the understanding of what year it was, it could have passed for, you know, 900, yeah. you know, a, a solid thousand years behind where we're at now, you know, and, and the mentality matches that. I mean, there there's places that, I mean, it, it's so primal and so caveman-like uh, that, you know, most people, I think, would be absolutely bewildered yeah. to, to know that there are, and, and it's not just, you know, a pocket here, a pocket there, like, you know, of the almost 8 billion people on the planet, there is a, a large portion that still live very much that way. Very yeah. traditional, mm-hmm. very, you know, primal caveman-like in, in terms of, you know, the, the historical, you know, sex references and, and relationships and responsibilities within the societies and, and things of that nature. And, and frankly, that's how most of the world is. Yeah. You know, I think we, we are given a, a lot of extra flexibility as it relates to uh, you know, be, being in a position where you can you can think and be concerned about things like that is a testament and speaks volumes to, to how successful we are as a country. And in a lot of places, they, they don't have that luxury. You know, they're they're so consumed with just surviving and, and being able to, to live and put food on the table and stay safe that all that other stuff is it's not even an afterthought. I mean, it doesn't even register with them. So, right. uh, you know, to me, you know, whether or not a, a somebody who's gay could be president, you know, for sure they could. I mean, to me, what would be interesting from a social experiment standpoint is, you know, the going to war aspect, you know, imagine a a Pete Buttigieg now goes to war with Iran. I mean, I don't see that happening. I think he would avoid it at all costs, but uh, you know, the, the complexities of of the social issues that would exist, um, you know, with them fighting a, you know, with a president of a country that, that they deem as basically uh, wrong and immoral and, and, you know, they're, 
they're killing people for for that over there. I think would be an interesting uh, an interesting perspective. You're taking sure. the great Satan to a whole new level. Yeah, uh, a yeah, whole I mean, new level. Death to America would be uh, more yeah. than just a bumper sticker over there. I, I mean, they, they've really got motivation to kill you now. Yeah. Yep. On this deal. Hey, let's talk about this. All of you listening to my show at this very moment are probably paying way too much, way too much on your mobile device if you aren't using Patriot Mobile. And listen, not even the worst part. Here's the bad thing. Most major cell phone carriers that are out there, they donate millions of dollars every year to left-wing causes, abortion, open borders. Everything that you claim to hate, your cell phone company's probably giving them money. Let's talk about what you need to do about it. Let's talk about because I, I know what people say now. I know what people say. People say, well, if I switch over to like a Patriot Mobile, is it going to work for me in the place where I live? So let's talk about reliability. Did you know that all the carriers that are out there use one of the same four towers? And listen, what's the difference? I'm going to tell you, Patriot Mobile is the only company that not only donates a portion of your bill to support conservative causes, religious liberty, life, and the Second Amendment, but starting at $25 a month, Patriot Mobile plans come with unlimited talk, text, and the same reliable nationwide service that everybody else has with no hidden fees. And look, this year, 2020, as we're talking about it in this show, probably more than at any point in history, we need to stick together. Gotta stick together. Go to patriotmobile.com slash chad. And when you use the offer code CHAD, you get a free month of service when you open a new line of service. And you can also call their U.S.-based customer service team, 877-367-7524, 877-367-7524. Vote with your dollars, vote with your wallet, support companies fighting for your values, and save some money with PatriotMobile.com. Call them on the phone, 877-367-7524. So this thing, like, like we're up against, here's what we're up against. Now, you might not like Donald Trump. There's a lot of Republicans. There's a lot of conservatives. I'm not, I'm a conservative. I've never, I've never affiliated myself with a political party, okay? But I have also always voted conservative mm -hmm. because I'm pro-life um, and I believe in a smaller government. We're so far beyond ever being able to have small government in this country. But I'm telling you, it's the difference between your values as an American historical traditional values. And I know there are people out there who say, well, why are you guys so anti-progress? Y'all are still arguing for people's rights to pull down their pants and shit in the streets of San Francisco. And you call yourself progressive? That's ridiculous. Don't even come at me with this stuff. I'm telling you, I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care. That's your business. Mm -hmm. You come at me and say, well, I'm gay. Good for you. What do you want? You want a ribbon? Mm -hmm. You need a rainbow flag? What do you want me to give you? I'm not giving you anything because you have a sexual preference. Stop trying to cram that stuff down my throat. But what you're going to have is if one of these people on this debate stage gets elected, you're going to have a lot of stuff crammed down your throat. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, they're not talking on this debate stage about Soleimani. They're not talking about Iran. They're not talking about the economy. The economy's too damn good. They're not talking about these issues. And these folks that want to come at us and make these comments about how Trump is so horrible. He's like, how in the world can you elect this pig? You're living in a pretty damn good America. Mike just referred to the cave dwellings that people are living in all over the globe. You're living in a pretty damn good America. And you can't tell me that Donald Trump in the last three years has totally ruined your life. People go into therapy because they say, well, my sex life's messed up because of Donald Trump. You got it all wrong. You're doing this thing wrong, right? This is the level of TDS we're dealing with. So uh, Trump's done a damn good job. I'm glad he wiped out Soleimani. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. I'm glad he did what he did. And I, th I think it ought to be like whack-a-mole. Every time somebody sticks their head up, pop, pop, just pop. I'm glad he's taking these guys out. I saw uh, our friend Tony Bronco. He's got a funny cartoon where he says, you know, Obama's red line, and it had the, the boots in the sand, and then it just kept walking past the red line. And then Trump's red line, one step past the thing, there was a hole in the ground that was smoldering. I love that. <laughs> um, and I'm not a warmonger, but I'm just saying, there are people who want to cut your throat. Don't you feel like the number of people who don't like Trump is going down, though? Did you see the national championship game and just yeah, the response crazy, that he right? got? Like when I went to Army Navy, the response that he got when he walked on that field was just tr it was moving. Yeah, it, I, I, I think, you know, and they're not talking about this stuff on the debate because they can't. Well, when you have a Rasmussen poll that comes out, this is 34 percent of blacks are now supporting. 
you got to pay yeah. attention to stuff like that because even if that is skewed in a way, which Rasmussen rarely is in that regard, if you have 18% of blacks supporting Trump, you got a landslide in 2020. It's going to be huge. So let's talk about Joe Biden, though. Joe Biden, who God only knows what Joe Biden's done. And, and, oh, let me say this, too, before I get into this. I don't care what side you're on. If you support politicians that are lifetime politicians who want to do this for 30, 40 years and nothing else, you got a problem. I don't care if you're right, left, whatever. This whole deal, and you got guys like Joe Biden who've been there since as long as I've been alive. And I'm, like I said, almost half a hundred. Mm-hmm. This is ridiculous. So Joe Biden's going to take credit for stopping ISIS. I don't know how he stopped him, but let's find out. Let's watch this clip. Region. Vice President Biden is Senator Warren Wright. Well, I tell you what, there's a difference between combat troops and leaving special forces in a position. I was part of the coalition to put together 68 countries to deal with stateless terror as well as failed states. Not us alone, 68 other countries. That's how we were able to defeat and, and end the caliphate for ISIS. They'll come back if we do not deal with them and we do not have someone who can bring together the rest of the world to go with us with small numbers of special forces we have to organize the effort to take them down. Special Forces, Navy SEAL, Mike Ritlin, your take on that. I mean, just one word, delusional. I mean, there's really... I mean, I don't know what else to say on it. Like, I mean, they 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 rose to a, a level in which even guys like me were legitimately concerned at, at the height of of where they were at, especially in terms of the ground that they'd taken. And and as somebody who's been to that country and and fought people in that country, uh, I can tell you to to see some of the the ground that was so sacred for us and so difficult for us to to secure and take in some of these areas and. And get uh, you know parts of the Sunni Triangle and, and up north and you know by the Kurds and Tikrit and even as far down down south as Nazaria and really everywhere in between is, is to see some of these pockets being completely overrun with our Humvees and and MRAPs uh, you know ISIS fighters sporting our you know digital camis and and web gear and weapons and and night vision and, and all of this you know shit that we left uh you know for them to be able to to fight for themselves uh was heartbreaking you know yeah. and, and and infuriating and and for a guy like that to uh even begin to take credit i mean to me in that case he should just sit down and, and say i'm gonna pass on this question <laughs> uh he's got no business talking about it i mean he he is half of the problem as to why they existed mm-hmm. in the first place you are a subject matter expert certainly in this area well, right do you think so oh yeah there's all kind of areas. <laughs> yeah. There's kind. There's like weird, like uh, deep ellum stuff that we do on Saturday <laughs> nights. But that's a whole other story. I'm talking about on this issue. Isn't it amazing? There's nobody on that debate stage who can who can say what you just said and say, "Shut up, Joe." Yeah. Well, I, I, to me, I'm surprised that even given you know the fact that they're kind of all on the same team, that right now they're they're looking at. Uh, at ways to to take each other down. I mean, to me that like if I was Buttigieg, Softball. yeah, I mean, I, you, he could have knocked that out of the park. Been like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know. So I, I think with most of them, they're they're so uh, scared and politically correct and tiptoeing around, walking on eggshells about everything. Is that you know it turns into more of a stroke fest than anything else. I mean, if I was up there, like I, I would be coming at at all of them with everything I had. I don't know why they don't. You know. Yeah. Uh, but. Well, yeah. I, I I do the dis bitch reference about Bernie because I, but back when they were doing the first couple of debates and they were, you know, they were talking about well, okay, we're going to get together and we're going to come together and Bernie and and uh, Sanders were talking about I'm sorry, Bernie and Liz were talking about how we're going to look out for each other and stuff. I would have gotten in the in the room back, back backstage and I'd be like, okay, you're going to say this, and then I'm going to say this, and then you're going to say this, and then I'm going to say this. And Elizabeth comes out and she's stroking him off, and and he's and then when it came his turn, I'd have been like, let me tell you about this bitch, <laughs> this bitch right here, <laughs> and just hammered her, right? But they don't—they're not doing any of that stuff. So I anyway, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. But you mentioned Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg is really taking the scripture thing. He's using the Bible still. He's, he's used it to defend abortion. Now he's talking about poverty. Let's play this clip from last night. It hasn't come up very much tonight, but deserves a lot of attention. Poverty. You know, the Poor People's Campaign is marching on Iowa right now, calling on us to talk about this issue more. They are driven by their faith. I think because even though in politics we're supposed to talk middle class, they know there's no scripture that says, as you've done unto the middle class, so you've done unto me. 
we got to be making sure that we target our tax dollars where they will make the biggest difference. And I don't think subsidizing the children of millionaires and billionaires to pay absolutely zero in tuition at public colleges is the best use of those scarce Senator taxpayer Warren. dollars. So if I'm going to be impoverished, I want to be impoverished in America. Back to your point. I mean, you've seen, I, I've been around the world, I've been in third world mm -hmm. countries. I've seen poverty. I mean, poverty, poverty. And there's mm -hmm. no hope for it. We have people in America who are impoverished, who are dealing with obesity and needing to get their insulin for their diabetes, right? Okay, so this this is a, like, obesity is a problem amongst our impoverished out here. So to talk about that is almost like lip service to me, which Buttigieg, I can't believe how many people he referenced black people last night during this debate. It was all, I'm like, if you keep talking about black people, about how much you love the black people, <laughs> It just proves you don't have any black friends. <laughs> well, I think he's. I think he's still doing damage control for the you know the mayor issue that he had with the cops and and uh, yeah. you know, it's like it's his default at this point you know. But yeah, you got to keep going at it. And I've always said that Buttigieg, not not a pun about the black people, but he's a dark horse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a dark horse. He's been the guy who's continued to rise in the polls. Sure. He's kind of leveled off here in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I don't think. And I want everybody in the room's take on this before we close out on this deal. But I want to know, Candace and Mark as well, uh, go to you first, Candace. Somebody asked me the other day, who gets this nomination? Who gets this nomination? Uh, if all things stayed the way they are, and this subpoena stuff doesn't go through with the impeachment thing, I think <clears throat> Biden becomes the deal. What are your thoughts on that? I would agree with that. Um, but then if they are not um, called back to serve, I think it might go Warren. Yeah. I don't know. She, scary. Yeah. Very scary. Scary. Mark, you got a thought on that? You got a, you got a horse in this race? I haven't really followed it super close, but Joe Biden is kind of yeah. the easy answer for me. So I don't blame you. Don't follow it super close. It'll give you herpes of the mind. Steve? Well, I watch a lot of YouTube videos on different things, you know, just – Every day, I wake up in the morning and uh, sports fights and sports stuff. fights and stuff like that. <laughs> Street and, beefs. And you know, let me stupid. tell you, gays love to fight. So Booty <laughs> Judge has a chance if Biden's out. Yeah. So I, his yeah, gloves ain't yeah. came off yet. They're coming off. Oh. Give him time. Claw and scratch. Yeah. Pulling hair. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. Again, what do you think, Mike? I mean, to me, I, I, I think I would concur, I guess, with everybody else's sentiment. I, I think Biden is probably uh, who is going to ultimately get it, which to me further highlights uh, just how incredibly ridiculous the entire Democratic Party is. Because yeah. to me, you know, Biden at, at the start of his uh, vice presidency tenure uh, seemed pretty sharp and, and cutthroat and, yeah. and formidable. Now, he, I mean, he honestly, he reminds me of like, the drunk grandpa at Thanksgiving, like just before pie is served, like just not even babbling, not making any sense. Like he's shaky. Uh, you know, to me, part of being a president is, is having a presence, right? You know, whether, you, whether you want to admit to it or not, when you're dealing with, and I can tell you from experience, when you're dealing with cavemen, you've got to, you you have to have a certain presence about you that, that they're going to respect. And if they don't, you know, even if it's on a subconscious level, a lot of people in this country won't either. Yeah. Uh, you know, and to me, between him and some of the like the rubbing the hair and, and wanting kids to sit on his lap, he's a creepy bastard to begin with. Uh, <laughs> he looks like Skeletor. And, and I mean, it, to me, like I, I'm baffled. Like yeah. I, I can't imagine what state of mind and, and where my lot in life would have to be for me to look at that guy and be like, that's my guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm with speechless. With a see-through kind of pseudo yeah, I mean, mullet. It's, it, it's, it's mind boggling that somebody <laughs> would think that that's the best guy for the job. And you know what you say? So we keep referring to the caveman thing. And I've got this whole parable about caveman politics and, and I bring it up again sometime, but what if you still, what if we were cavemen, right? Caveman, cave women, whatever you want to say. I mean, I don't know that women count just, Whatever. We just drag you by the hair back in the thing. But but think of all the stereotypes of the caveman thing. I don't I want you seen and not heard, Natalie. I get seen it. Seen and not heard. So just go go stir the brisket. It's weird because I'm loud. But yeah. yeah. But you but like who if you're running the cave village, mm -hmm. who do you want running this thing? Because it's barbaric. And you have to think about the rest of the world as being right. in many ways barbaric. They want you dead. Mm -hmm. Majority of the world wants you as a Westerner. They want you dead. They don't care about you, they don't like you. So think about it from a cave mentality. Who do you want? I mean, is there anybody on this debate stage up here that you look at and go, hmm, 
I just love that Iranian spoof film they put out, that propaganda film where they attacked Washington D.C. and they threw mm -hmm. the grenades in the yeah. in the Oval Office, and there's Trump. They superimposed his face over the dead guy and stuff. Had a little blood coming out of the look. Hair was on point. Donnie's hair was tight. You. Yeah. I mean, even in death, Donnie's got it still. Bam. <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be Corn Pop v. Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump it, it doesn't matter With an point. Elizabeth Warren vice president, probably, probably something so. like that. That's how I feel. Kamala and then Harris, Trump's maybe. Gonna win. I hope not. God, I hope not. Oh, my yeah. God, I hope not. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, folks, Michael Avenatti is officially out of the race because he's right now in jail yes yes he is <laughs> remember the whole trump's going to jail we're gonna make sure of it oh my god uh good. let's let's speaking of gays and flaming things let's talk about pete Buttigieg talking about the floods and the fires let's talk one more time about the thing that really matters to the mayor world. Buttigieg. you've talked about helping people move from areas at high risk of flooding but do you but what do you do about farms and factories that simply can't be moved that's why we have to fight climate change with such urgency. Climate change has come to America from coast to coast. We're seeing it in Iowa. We've seen it in historic floods in my community. I had to activate our emergency operations center for a once in a millennium flood. Then two years later, had to do the same thing. In Australia, there are literally tornadoes made of fire taking place. This is no longer theoretical. This is no longer off in the future. We have got to act, yes, to adapt, to make sure our communities are more resilient, to make sure our economy is ready for the consequences that are going to happen one way or the other. But we also have to ensure that we don't allow this to get any worse. And if we get it right, farmers will be a huge part of the solution. We need to reach out to the very people who have sometimes been made to feel that accepting climate science would be a defeat for them, whether we're talking about farmers, or industrial workers in my community and make clear that we need to enlist them but Mayor in the national project to do something to about To clarify, this. what do you do about farms and factories that cannot be relocated? We are going to have to use federal funds to make sure that we are supporting those whose lives will inevitably be impacted further by the increased severity and the increased frequency. And by the way, that is happening to farms, that is happening to factories, and that disproportionately happens to black and brown Americans, which is why equity and environmental justice have to be at the core of our climate Thank plan. Thank you, Mayor Buttigieg. Forward. Environmental justice. I love that phrase right there. I'm going to put that he did, on. He a, didn't mention those Australian fires and how they've arrested 20-something arsonists that set those yeah, fires. Yeah, so there's yeah. definitely a climate change, but that climate is in the people. You got to get rid of Muslim teenagers that are shooting off fireworks in Australia. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> been a lot of them. <laughs> uh, you want to stop flooding? Stop pouring concrete everywhere. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, good God. <clears throat> okay, so you hear him talk about all that stuff. And y'all saw the little 30 second clip or 40 second clip that I put when I was talking to the climate protesters in Washington mm -hmm. then this, this last week. I said, and it's not in the clip, but I asked him, I said, do you believe that the most pressing issue to the world today and America today is climate change? And they said, oh, yes, of course. They can't back it up. And my thing is, okay, let's say you relocated farmers or whatever. Of course, you got to use the federal funds, right? You're going to pay for health care. You're going to pay for education. You're going to pay for reparations. You're going to pay for every little thing you got. You know, we're going to pay for sex changes if you're in the military. All these different things we're going to use federal funding for. Now, now we got to relocate farmers. Okay, let's say everybody on the planet right now just said, all right, we believe in climate science. Great. Is Greta Thunberg happy? Are any of these candidates happy now? No, because they'll move on to the next thing to whine about. Well, I mean, okay, so we believe in it. Now what? But to me, now what? Yeah. To, to me, I, I think uh, the bigger picture is that, you know, fear breeds loyalty. Yeah. And they, they don't have anything else to talk about in terms of, you know, things are going pretty damn good in this country. And and to have a shot at winning, and, and what, which ultimately, uh, you know, leads to power, is that that's really what it's about is that you know if you if you control people's minds through fear and they think wow if we don't put these people in power to to save our impending doom we're screwed so let me vote for this person i mean to me that's a hundred percent what it's about it doesn't have shit to do with with the climate or not or or what else it's it's how can we scare enough people to vote for us thinking that we're the only solution to to save their lives and and this planet perfect analysis Perfect analysis. I'm going to leave it right there. All I'm going to encourage people to do is in 2020, don't assume Donald Trump's going to win. Because if you assume that, it's not going to happen. 
got to get ready. You got to be prepared to vote. Know where to go to vote. And let's start right now, right? Let's start right now getting prepared. I And look, I, I've come out. I don't ask any of my guests. I don't expect my guests to agree with me anytime somebody's on, whether it's a mic or Clint, these guys, you know, these guys have gone out there and laid waste across the country and just done great things for our country, serving and sacrifice, watching their friends. I, I never ask them their politics. Our friendships are never based on politics. Nothing like that. I don't care about any of that stuff. But I personally, I personally have come to a point where I am 100% dyed in the wool after watching these debates over and over again. I'm dyed in the wool 100% Trump 2020. There's no other option. It's just not in the cards we have a new T-shirt coming out uh, that's going to say Trump 2024. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want heads to melt. <laughs> but we, we're going to put that out. It'll be out uh, by the weekend. I'm going to have that out. You can get it at watchchad.com. Um, Steve, we're going to Washington. we got a show Saturday night in Everett, Washington. That's the 18th, so get your tickets there. Go to watchchad.com. Next week, we're going to be in Rocky Mount, Virginia. Mike, you ever been to Rocky Mount, Virginia? You want to talk about cave people? I haven't. Yeah, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> yeah, beautiful country. Yeah, uh, but I've never. I, and I joke about that. I've just never been there. Uh, I kind of have this feeling it's going to take a big plane, a little plane, a kayak, and a donkey, and we're going to come into the village holding a deer over mm -hmm. our shoulders, kind of a peace offering to the village, and just say we're here I'll to make bring you your laugh. banjo. <laughs> I was going to say it's a beautiful country there. It's though. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. gorgeous. We joke about it, and, and people, you know, we joke about it everywhere we go. But, uh, yeah, just south of Roanoke, Virginia is where Rocky Mountain is. So we're going in there, and then we're going to head out to the land of Cali, California. We're starting it off again. California is our most supportive state. It's the craziest thing. Most supportive state. Going back to Bakersfield at the Fox. Going to be in Visalia at the Fox. So that's the 30th and 31st. And then we're going to make the long drive over to Reno, February 1st. Yep. Cargo Concert Hall is where we're going to be in Reno. First ever show in Reno. You would think, right? Much as we do Vegas and stuff like that, first ever show in Reno. Party time, Mom. Good. Party time, Mom. I'm liking this whole lumberjack thing Thanks. you got going on. Thank you. I mostly like the belt. Thank you. The belt's kind of cool. I've been wearing it a lot lately. Have you? Yeah. Have you? <laughs> Are you little... like me? Like, I get fatter and I wear a wider belt. No, no. Try to slimmerize? I feel, sl <laughs> I feel slimmer. You know these hips. I mean, I could starve myself and I'm still going to have big hips. I just... Am, but I'm feeling slimmer, so I, I posted the truck on. video. Yeah, I, I, my weight, you know, it does this. Yeah, like I, that's why I layer up. That's all of us. Yeah, and and uh, I did the truck video about the Gwyneth vagina candle, and, and this one lady was like, Chad, you're you're really, you know, there's always the one. You're really gaining weight. <laughs> you're looking fluffy. I'm like, that's your takeaway. Welcome to Trump's America. I don't miss meals. Your response but you know, if you was do... great. I remember your response. You said your potato. I bet your potato I'm like salad that. sucks. I said that's a great takeaway from this video, and I bet your potato salad's nasty. Yeah, I mean, true. like, just how random is that? She's but like, no, you... my potato salad is great. I love you, darling. I'll eat your potato salad. <laughs> but if you have your one candle. of those vagina candles, maybe you'll lose your appetite. <laughs> Maybe. That could be a good diet plan. It might make me hungry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, hey, like tuna. I will really try, baby. Ooh. Come on, Gwenny. Come on, Gwenny yes. P. We got to get out of here. Hey, watchchad.com, partyfoundation.com. And uh, make sure you tune in the next couple of days. Uh, be next week, I guess. We'll have Mike Ritland. Mike Ritland's going to sit over here in the hot seat. We're going to talk about all things. I wanted you to get you on after Baghdaddy got his balls cut off by the dog. Yeah. Uh, but we couldn't work out the schedules. But we're going to talk about a little bit of that. So come back. When it comes to Navy SEALs and Navy SEAL dogs, this is your guy. And always a fun talk and chat with Mike. So make sure you're coming back on. What's your website? Uh, Tricos.com. That's T simple. Yeah. T-R-I-K-O-S, Tricos.com. Or just my name, Mike yeah, so make, yeah. There you go. You can Google Mike Ritland. It's going to be Erwar. <laughs> Erwar. It's Erwar. all bad. <laughs> we're getting out of here thanks for tuning in go to where podcasts are offered give us a good rating and a review we always appreciate that and tell all your friends to subscribe to the chad prather youtube so they never miss the chad prather show i love y'all god bless talk to you next time bye